Hi, and uh, today we are going to be building um, from scratch a AWU intro that I submitted for um, Achievement Hunter. It was number 250, and I had a comment on it that said, please just make a tutorial for this. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. Starting right from scratch, going through exactly how I set it up, um, camera moves, models used, um, programs used and really just looking in depth and hopefully give you a little more understanding on how okay. I set it up so that so you can use it for video any project you need to be recreating and, um, and don't really know how long it's going to be quick, hopefully pretty quick we so let's with. head right on in so there's this move one shot two shot three shots in this whole thing pretty simple and we're going to go over exactly how we made that so this video is another tutorial that will help you if you want that exact look. So this is the video from Video Copilot. This is what they made with theirs. And we're going to use some assets from this tutorial. So you can see some of the similarities. So pretty much just this shot is what we built. Less depth of field, more just the digital growths and the title. So that's what we have to work with today. So let's go right into After Effects. Um, we're going to go make a new comp and build our scene from scratch. Other scenes I have set up here, which is composition, new composition. I had it at this frame rate because it was being submitted uh, online, so they wanted a smaller file size. And uh, Let's just make this one. We'll click OK. And so that's one second. And pretty much, we don't need too long. We can edit it later. I just want pretty small because we don't want this ginormous view that we need. But right now, I might set it up to maybe three three seconds each frame. Seems like a good distance. So there we go. So we got three seconds for each of our compositions. We're going to use Video Copilot's element as our main base that we use for this. So command Y will get you a, a new solid. Just call this element 3D. Right where we want it, right size. And click OK. So we'll go here, effects, Video Copilot, element and go on our scene setup and now we are in element 3d so I have bought from them their model pack 2 motion design and comes with tons of great stuff like a vast array of things that you will always be using just buttons capsules just tons of really great stuff I would recommend buying it and this tutorial really is element heavy because it's just so fast. I also use Cinema 4D, but just the render times you get from element is just uncompared. And so if I'm going to try to make something really quick and crank it out for a customer or just to kind of show an idea, I'll go right into element. So just going through all the packs of just like if any of this catches your eye of like, man, I absolutely need that in my life. Definitely, definitely buy this. Just bolts, tedious amounts of bolts. But what we're going to be looking at is screens. So you got tons of screens here, tons to choose from. And I set up a grid three by three of just different screens in their own little group, which you can make here. So just grab a screen, looking good, and see this one has a good face, nice reflection, turn on the environment, see what we have reflecting it. That's pretty good. We might go in later and change that. So we got our screen. First off, great. Zoom out a bit. Might shrink the screen down. Go into uh, transform, scale. Scale it down a bit, maybe make it 50. Looks good. So we're going to be filling this whole space, 3x3, three three, different screens. So this is our center screen. Then you just go find another screen that we like. This one's got some detail. 
shrink this one down to right around 50. Move it over. Move it over. You want a little bit of space in between, but not much. And then this one's pretty cool. They're all relatively the same size. So if we put them all to that just generic 50, they should all work pretty well. Put that guy right there. So we got a pretty good line going. And so that's our middle row. So that's all set up. And just for simplicity's sake, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to hold Option and drag up. Maybe switch it up a bit, put him over here. Take our first guy, option drag up, put him over here. It's a little bit of variety. Take our third guy, same exact thing, put him up there, move it over, right about there. And so, if you really want to be tedious, you can go and label these, like mid, mid is I think how I did it. And then this is top right. And this just helps you so that when you're trying to put a screen on them, you can exactly click because you can't. Well, you can, but it's a little bit harder to go from here, which you can then go select which one you want. But then you have to go to the camera to move. So this one is top left. We got mid right. Top, mid, and last but not least, we have mid, left. So now we just need to take this one, option, drag them down, just like before. Bring them over here, take mid, left, drag them down, put them over here, and and right, bring them down, and put them in the middle. So there is our screen array. We have all these screens looking really high tech. You can do textures to them, add whatever you want, really. And uh, so this is the basic setup. There's going to be a lot more detail added, is what I did for my video. But right now, this is the base. If you just want to stop there, that's all right. We're going to go bottom, mid, bottom, right, bottom, left. So this is all set up in our group folder, which will be applied to the very first group, which is really nice. Added an element. This is version 2. You got these group folders which I would have in element one had to put all these, I can only have five. But this is just amazing to have big selection. I also went through and I think I just made a, a primitive a rectangle. Went and switched to uh, sizing. Made him a little bit thinner. Made him the big background so that these guys weren't just in space. Move him back a little bit on the z-axis. So they're just setting a little bit on something. Gives a nice um, backdrop for the ambient occlusion to hit and we can just go into textures, another texture pack, Pro Shaders 2, go into the metal, and look for something nice, dark. I think for this one, I went down here and I grabbed this, Metal Panel Steel. Supply it right on there. Name him back. Just bring him down to the bottom. Oh. Bring him right to the bottom there so that we can remember that he is the back of this whole comp. Go in his texture settings and um, go to the UV mapping. Think for this one, I shrunk it a bit to make it feel, you know, a little bit. Set it to two. Just a little more detail there. And uh, it's looking pretty good. So, 
now we have our whole basic scene set up. I went through and you could see on the other one right here there's some detail of something. That was just one of the probably technical parts or tech that I put on here. Tech components. I put one of these. Just slid it right in there. So I guess we can do that. We can add um, just a little component. Let's see if I can find the exact thing that we had. Here it is. So this is the thing that I had to put right on there. This button right here targets to it, which is really helpful because there's no real um, panning and it's all just rotating. So we'll go in here, we will hold shift and rotate him 90 degrees. Go back to right there. We've got our move him a little bit forward. Line him right there. Go to his transform. Bring him way down. And drag him to the side. Hold option. Drag him to the other side. And there. That's pretty much the setup I had. And so we'll go into the texture settings for that guy. And just take this metal, replace it with something else. There we go. Make it all black. That's how I had it. Same here. And we're good. So, this is the basic setup. Got all your screens, got your backdrop. And so, the next detail that we will add is the screens, when you zoom in on them, are just this blank slate of nothing. They, uh, they don't really have any reflection, they don't have any grooves or this kind of like pixel gr like grittiness that you see on television screens when you get up close to them. They don't really have that, they're just a bit smooth, which maybe you want glass over it or something. We'll just go into them, each one. We'll go into the middle, mid mid right here and shut this off and we see that's the screen texture right there white so we will then we can just take this gloss go into pro shaders something translucent see if there's anything in there let's go to plastic Here we go, black gloss. So we'll put that as a screen. So now we have this nice reflection. Looks more like a TV screen, right? But the thing that I didn't really like about this was that there was no grittiness on it. And we'll just name this screen so that we can see it when we go into our textures. We'll know that that's the screen we can apply it to each one. So you can go into the normal bump and set one for it. You can have any texture you want. For this one, I'm just going to load from file, go into materials from the video copilot, go into pro shaders, and I went into fabric. And you might be like, this is crazy. But we're going to go and just look for a jean fabric. Eh, maybe that. Just something a bit grittier. Those fabrics all look pretty soft. Nothing really too crazy. That's a bit weird. So maybe we'll go with that. Just look through here. See if any of them got like this tight knit bump to them. Some leather. What you're looking at is for this. This is what how this will show you how much it will like raise it on the normal path. So, the tiger fur, that's not what we want. So, this is looking pretty good. So, we'll go and we'll sec that. And you see immediately that's, that's looking crazy. 
That is not what we want. So we want to go and we'll, we'll crank it down a bit. So we just want a bit of this. And then we'll go back in here and we'll set this to 2 by 2. You see it goes and it shrinks. So maybe we'll go crazy 5 by 5. And that looks to me more like a TV screen. Right? There's that that not perfect reflection. And I like that because we zoom in a bit on it and we want to see that oh it has has some reflecting. But this this looked better to me. So this is our screen texture right here. So we'll shut that off. And we will apply it then to every screen here. See if we can do this right. Yep. And just throwing the texture on to all the screens. Just dragging it right directly where they are. It's faster than opening them all up and trying to place it. And there you go. Now all of your screens are custom. They all look great. And this is the final setup. This is exactly how I had it set up. We'll maybe go in, just click on the VR environment, go in, there's a backlight, stick with 2K, look for a nice dark setup, maybe this one, double click on that, yeah, that's looking nice, nice and dark, nice reflections we got going on, look at that, it's nice. And so, even here, um, I'll be looking at how will this reflection, I know we can change it, but how will this reflection look in my shot? And I'm looking, is this, is this too reflective? I don't know. I like it. It's looking sexy. So, we'll go in, we have the scene set up. Boom. Here it is. Next thing we gotta do, layer, new camera, so that we can move around our scene. Um, we'll go with uh, 35, and everything looks good. Click OK. Now we have our camera control. Just for now, we're going to go in and shut the depth of field off so we can see what, just what we're working with. And this is your basic scene. This is all you have. Now, for the video, I had my, over here, the whole setup for the title animation. It's all done which you can watch the tutorial by Andrew Kramer, great tutorial. And set this all up, figure out how to do it, customize it, however you like. And so this is what we'll be playing in the middle. Right there. So, we'll want to go to our project, and wherever you have, if you render it out, or if you just keep it in a comp and you create this and that. Um, we'll go, we'll click comp 1, we'll drag it in, we will rename it, I will 250 or whatever logo you want or title you want. We'll click element 3D, go to custom layers, custom texture maps, and we'll just click right there. So that is now in this little cache that we can go right in here. Go to our scene. See if we can do this. I'm not sure if I know. Okay, here we go. Duplicate model or texture. So this is a copy. In here, we we'll want to go to the diffuse. Comp one. And so this is the comp right in here as our diffuse. We'll go into illumination also, which helps really sell it as actually playing. And there, those two are set in this screen. We'll zoom out and select the middle screen, target it so that we can rotate around it, and we'll give it this. Now, nothing has changed in this view because that video has not started on our timeline. There's nothing, we're at the very beginning. But we move forward, and you can see that I did not do it right. Let's see why that is. Okay, screen copy, custom layer. This guy is still. 
min mid screen copy not exactly sure how I did this wrong should be right and custom layer right okay so that should be working we should be seeing it right there that's what I'm confused about so go back here where to our comp get some texture maps oh 250 so that's all set up right so let's see why we can't see it means go back here so we should be seeing it right there Reset that. Click OK. Go back here. Select this layer. See what we uh, what's going on. Select those back on. Cancel it. Bring it back here from Comp One. So we should be seeing that change. Which is weird because we're not. So, well, let's go. Materials, physical. Let's go right here to uh, black gloves. We'll, we'll set it right there. Go to our normal bump. Load from file. Sorry about this, but you know, if this happened to you, you'd be freaking out. Why didn't you show me how to fix this? Fabric. Go back down to blue. Grab that. Set it to five. Set it to five. There we go. Click it down a little bit. And then set this as a picture one. Now, it didn't work again, but we can go check out why. Is that affecting it at all? Should we set this to white? There we go. Okay, I'm a dummy. Okay, so this has to be on white. That was our problem right there. So you're probably like screaming on the other end. And then we can crank this intensity, which really helps sell. It makes it look a lot better for the illumination. And so we'll crank this back to one. Don't get overzealous. And uh, let's see what we have the other bump set to so that they're pretty much the same. Screen, he set to 18. So we were a bit high. Boom. Everyone's the same. But now we have this cool custom video playing in the middle. Which we can go back in our comp. Just click C to zoom in. right there and we can see that our video will play in our comp in element which is pretty cool just in and of itself that you can have that happen so set it right there now the next thing is we have we had a logo spinning on this side for the first shot of the video well you only saw it playing there it was playing on all of them so this is where it's more up to you. I have my video here just playing. So we'll add that in. Shut it off. Shut it off. And then we'll go into element. Same exact kind of deal. And we'll just assign it here. So that's our other video. Same thing. This time we'll know what we're doing. And we can just use this other texture right here. Screen copy. We'll go in, select comp, com, custom layer 2, go in the illumination, custom layer 2, 
and then hit this and go up to white. Boom. So now we will add this to all of our other screens. Just like that. So this is getting out of hand quickly. Looking really official, really cool, and bam, something important is happening on these screens. We know it. So, from this, we'll go click OK. We'll go back and wow, there's a lot of information happening. The cool thing is, we can pre-compose this, click Move All Attributes, have it be labeled Second Video, click OK. And then, in here, if we don't like how those aren't matching, we can go in here, Option Command Y gives us an adjustment layer. Go in Effects, go in Color Correction, Curves, go bring the green and just down a bit, click the blue on the high, bring it just up a little bit, down a little bit here, and uh, back to the green. There, go to color correction, hue and saturation. Just bring it over a little bit more of the green we had in the other one. Bring the saturation right about there. A little bit more lightness. We're just playing around, seeing what we like. So we'll go back. Okay, looking a little bit closer, you know what you can do? You can just take this adjustment layer, which I'm sure has, ah, there we go, has all of the color correction from this tutorial that I went through. So take that, bring it into second video, get rid of this one, place it, and look at that. Perfect. Exactly what we wanted. So those are looking way more similar. So we can scrub through, see that the color is a lot better. Might want to go in another adjustment layer, Option Command Y, Effect, Color Corrections, Brightness and Contrast, and just bring up the brightness a bit. It's looking a little muted. So there we go. That looks good. That looks good. There we go. Perfect. So here we go. Back into Comp 5. We can relabel this. First shot, I will 250. So this is going to be our base. We can get rid of these ones because that was just from the. Uh, oh, so let me get rid of that. Here we go. So, this is our base. This has everything we need in it for the video to run smoothly. And you know what? I might actually go back in and crank up the illumination on that video. On this texture right here. Screen copy. Might go into the illumination. Just bring it up a bit. It's looking a little muted. There we go. That looks right. So, now our whole scene is looking good. It's all set up, and if this is as far as you want to go, that's great. But I'll continue to explain a little bit, a little bit more. There we go. And um, go into like the camera moves that I use. So this is our first shot. We're going to show copy that. Make another one. Label this second shot. Oh, that's okay. And then end shot. And so these are all the same comp, different titles, so that in each one we can have a different angle. And then we'll have the final one where we just take all those and edit them right up next to each other. So let's open up second and open up end. 
So in the first shot, I had it, the camera, C, had it to the side a bit, a little bit more angled down. And if you keep clicking C, you'll like shuffle through the different commands. For right now, I'm going to go into element, go into output, final render, and click it to preview. Doesn't really change it much. But just a, normally while I'm editing the, uh, the looks, I'll crank it down a third, which yeah, it takes a hit. But man, is it faster. Look at that. Because I don't have a crazy big computer. If you do, by all means, keep it a final so you know exactly what you're working with. So, had like a shot somewhere around here. Just, you want an interesting angle on your video that we'll be shooting. So this is really what you want to be focusing on even though you're looking at a screen. So we can even take that second video and push this to an angle we think is interesting. So we got this right. It will only be running for about two seconds. So about we want to see a full cycle of the logo. Just you know a good tease. We get right about there. So right about here, we're going to want it to stop. So we're going to bring it in, so we know that's where our video is stopping. And we can bring this, so we even know in our comp where it's going to be stopping. So right about here, we will uh, maybe pan a little farther out. We'll add depth of field later. Got a little bit of detail. And we'll go into the camera settings. And I never really know how I'm going to move my camera, so I just select them all. We go later. We we'll want to slide by it. We we'll want a bit of this move. And then I'm just rotating around the object. We move in a bit. Move past. So you want a simple move that won't take too long, but will get you Nice reflection bouncing, pretty much. So we'll go back here. We'll see this is our move that we have. Pretty ominous, pretty epic, nice slow move. And we get the logo right there. Like, that's pretty. So this is our very first move. Great. All good. So that's done. That's all you really, that's all I really did. We'll go into the depth of field on the camera. Normally I'll do this at the end, but you know, just to crank through each one of these so we can line them up later. Go and click that on. And bring this up a bit. You know, maybe 50. So we get this really tight, tight focus is what we want. We want everything to be blurry if we're not looking at it and just a glimpse. It allows for the mystery to be there and um, just for everything to seem a bit larger than it is. Like we're actually flying a camera through here. So we'll just guess we'll pull this a little bit closer. You can see it moving in the comp because we're at a low. So we'll start right here. And we'll click that on. And even though you shouldn't mess with those, sometimes I do. You know, depends on what you're flying by. And then we'll come here at the end, and we'll pull it in, or out, should I say, to right about there, which was right here that we're looking at. And then I go in the middle. You see, what am I looking at? Is it interesting? Should I switch it? And so I'm going to crank it right there. And so you can see right about here, it's still out of focus up here, which is what we want. We want it out of focus, out of focus, right in focus as it comes around. Now I'm going to crank up the blur to around 200, because we really don't want to know what that is. And so there's the blur cranked up ridiculous, but it allows for this mystery. You don't really know what's happening. So this is good. This is looking good. So that's basically the first shot. 
all done. So this scene is set. We will add color correction later in the comp where we add each one of these together so that we get this global we don't have to do it in each one like test it out so this is we're back here but the move is pretty simple crank this down to third crank this to preview so we'll go in C to flip through we'll just zoom in the shots right about here where we don't get a lot of the title, but we get some of it. And we pan up. Take this. So we want a little bit of the intro coming in. Okay. That's not working. Not sure why. Um should be because it worked for oh this one will have to move in here or in the comp so go to second shot and we'll have to do it in comp so even though we're moving this it won't ever matter because it's actually being activated over here so we'll go to the second shot and it's because it's all whatever you want in your own screen. We'll just set it right about here. Drag this forward so we know this is where we're starting. Go forward a bit. Right about there is where we'll have it stop. So this is what the animation will be on the screen. And then pretty simple, we go to camera that our keyframes right there. Go to the end and we just pan down. That's that's the move. It's just here to there. Now you can hold down shift to get a clean move like you're on a dolly if you want that. So we have this nice clean move. And I think for this one, I, I right-clicked on those and set Easy Ease. And clicked on these. Or should I just uh, click on those two? On those being activated. Easy Ease. So you get this nice slow move. The only problem is they'll stop here. So what we want is we'll drag them out a bit and drag these out a bit. So you're in full motion the whole time. You don't quite stop, but you're in full motion. So that's what I did. And then close this drop down, open this one up, Let's turn on depth of field. For consistency, crank that up to 200, crank this up to 50. Really nice blur and pull the focus out. See as we drag, comes in a bit more focus. So right here I had it set on this little speaker of detail that we gave it. Add all that, bring it down, and keep it there. So you can set a keyframe even if you don't change anything back there. But the thing is, right here, I have it move back in to the screen for a bit of detail. So he's out of focus, but this is in focus, but it fluctuates. Goes from right here, you get a bit of the screen, and then we're back out. I might drag this a little bit further. Right here, pull it back in. So there we go, we fluctuate out and back into that being in focus. Great. So that's our second move really quickly and this is already pretty much set up for our last move we just have to go to the end look for where the title is going to be coming in
third preview so we can scrub it a little bit better. So we look, and right about there is where the 250 comes in. So we're going to start back here, cheat it a bit, even though we already saw that. We're going to cheat it back here a bit so we still get the logo and everything. Go and set our keyframes. Bring this up so we know where we're starting. Go to the very end of the animation, right there, which we seem to not be going long enough. So we'll, we'll just switch that, comp settings. Let's go from three to about five. And now we have a little bit more to work with, but we will have to drag all of these out so that they continue. Second video should uh, be right here, probably, in its spin. So, 250, done right about there. So that's as long as our comp will go. But we probably want this guy to end on that. So, go back here. So we get a nice. That's that will be the animation. Okay. So now it's all set up. We we know the amount of time, and we'll be out here, and then we'll move right in to the screen. So shuffle through C, which will be our different cameras, and right here, so that it looks like we're just looking at a title screen, right? Pan a little bit. Oh. They seem to be just right. Perfect. So this is the ending shot. We'll select Easy Ease. Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease. And we want to actually rush in and then slow down. So that's our animation. And then we'll close that drop down, go in here just like the rest. Turn that on. Crank this up to 200. Crank this up to 50. Boom. So this is the amount of blur that you want. If you want more, you know, just really crank it up. I think these nice uh, bokeh circles, or that's just what I refer to them as, are really nice. Turn those back all back on and uh, pull in. And you really don't want to know what it is until right about here, so we'll set these and then we'll set it a little bit, you know, give it a bit of focus. Pull in. Give it a bit more. And that's perfect. So that's our animation right there. Zoom in. Perfect. So, you can go see exactly how our camera's moving. See if it's getting that focus right. Looks about right. Looks like it's going back past it a bit with the focus. So we'll pull that back. So it's hitting it right there on that line. Which is really nice if you're trying to, from a top view, hit one of your um, objects perfectly. It's really nice to have this view and see. So we'll go back to one view right here. And this is this is the end. This is everything. We'll keep this a third because it won't matter when we make the new comp. But here we go. Composition, new composition. Just call this all. Has the right settings. Set this to 10. Just in case, you know, don't really know. And we'll go through, and these are all of our comps, so first shot, second shot, and end shot. So here's all our comps. So we got first shot, goes through, but the nice thing is, because it's all relative and we select the in frame, we can go right here, first shot, and we can see we're that far in, so we'll click at the end, go back to all, and this is where it ends. If you kick Command Shift D, it cuts it right at that line. You just get rid of this. And that's your full first shot right there. All cut perfectly. So we'll go to our second shot. 
second shot, and we'll see it starts right here. Go back to all, command shift D, get rid of this first part. And so this is how I edit, just so I know exactly where I am in each comp. And so I know this is the section that I want. So I'm just dragging this back. Then we go to end shot, click here, command shift D, go back for the end. And okay. Get rid of that. Don't know why that's there. And command shift D. So those are that's our whole video right there. It's running a bit small, you know, five seconds, but that's pretty good for any title animation, maximum you'll probably want is 10 seconds. So I'm just going in here saying if we have permanently, I perfectly line that up. We go in here and line this, line this guy up. Great. And even sometimes that's looking good. Sometimes you'll have your keyframe set up where it will look like it just started a movement, which is not good because you want these cuts to feel like you're catching it in motion. That one's looking pretty good to me. I don't know about that one. Might cheat him in a bit. Yeah, okay, that's looking good. So this is a pretty fast version of what the video was when I cut it together. So, we'll go, command, option, y, add effects, brightness and contrast. So I'm not the best at coloring or, uh, you know, giving a certain look to a video. They're all pretty basic, so I normally just take the brightness down a bit, bring the contrast in, Maybe should have a bit more bling. Effects color correction, curves, just give it a simple drop here, bit of bling, that just gives it this darkness, go into the green, crank that up a bit because that's their colors, but you know, you still want it, these reflections to seem pretty nice. And uh, you don't need any red really, at all, so you get this nice blue, if you drop that red in the middle and you kind of want to drop it out of the highs. So you, another thing you can add to kind of tie these all together even though they're all 3D and all computer generated you still kind of get a disconnect even from scene to scene so what you'll want to do is add effects distort nope, noise and grain add grain you can see as this grain, it's a bit much. I don't ever like it in the preview, so I just put it out to final output. And you can see that's a lot of grain. So we'll crank this to about 0.3. You can see it's still there. That's looking pretty nice. Um, set this to 0.5. Get a bit sharper noise. So maybe 0.4. That's a bit overkill. Send it back to 0.3. And so this is whatever really sty style you like is um, what you would set that to. I like it over grainy sometimes, but you really got to see what it looks like with um, your objects in it. And that's looking pretty good. You know, a bit of grain maybe. Um, put this down. It's like 0.7 or something. You get something really nice tight. But it just brings it together. It ties this to that, the lights, and everything really. So yeah, I like that. That's looking good. Nice green. So that's all the steps really that I took. You get this nice real film look. Obviously not film for like real film nerds, but you get this just globally brought together of the end of the comp and look at that that's just beautiful looks great obviously this can say whatever you want tone it any way you want color it any way you want but that's the that's the whole tutorial on 
how I made that video, and I really hope this helped. So I'll see you if you guys have any more questions, just leave them in the comments. Like the video if it was helpful, so I can kind of get feedback. And go check out other videos and see if you have any questions on those. So I'll see you later. Bye.